Hey guys, today we are going to be talking a little bit more about database, specifically what are relational database models. Before we begin, just want to make sure that if you are enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, click subscribe somewhere over here, I think it's usually below the video, and definitely also comment or give me a like if you really enjoy it. Give me any comments if you have any questions or something that I explained over here was not clear and make things more confusing. I will try to make sure that I address those things to make sure it's as clear as I can do it. With that, let's dig into what are databases. So let me come over here, share my screen really quick. And we are going to be talking about relational databases. So relational databases is one of the different type of databases that are mostly used in many, many locations. Whenever we're talking about databases, that's where the data is being stored. But whenever we talk about databases, it's not just about a simple concept of database, it's called about the data database management system, the DBMS. And the DBMS will have different models that it will help you to make sure that you are communicating correctly with the database. It will create what is called data dictionaries. What means with that is that you will know what type of data is being stored over there. You will have basically what it says is a dictionary of what type of information is being stored on the database. Now, relational database comes a little bit more from a theory of a set and relational calculations with in other words means that it allows you to have a data structure, a storage, retrieval operations, and also it creates integrity on its data. Now the database, relational database is organized into four different areas. So we have the tables. So we have over here a table and it's not necessarily that that's the drawing, but over here is just to make a little bit more sense. And I'm going to be using over here an example where we have different departments, managers, and computers, um, just to give more sense to this data. So we have a table, and a table will have a row, a row or also called tuple. So over here, let's say it is called department. Department. And then each row will have different columns or sometimes called domains, or sometimes also called attributes. So let's say we have here the department ID. We have here the department name, for example. And that's the structure of that table. Within that table, we will have the different fields. The different fields, it will be the data. So I will be making another draw of how that looks for. So over here, we're going to have, let's say, another table. And this table, let's say, is called managers. So this is the managers. And that will be the row or tuple. And here will be the columns. So we will have a manager ID. We will have a manager name. And we will have also a department ID because we want to know which department the manager is. Now, one of the properties or one of the areas of a relational database that we need to make sure is that each of the tables will have its own, what is called a private key. So let's put it over here like a key and let's call it this one a private key. A private key is usually an ID, something that uniquely identifies the entire information over here. It's almost like your social security number that identifies who you are and is unique to you. No one else will have the same number. And we will also have over here what is called a foreign key. A foreign key is basically a link, a link between two tables. It's not that you always going to have a link. Sometimes it could be that there's no link associated. But in this case, for example, the department ID have a foreign key to the department ID in the managers. So we know that both are related. So how that help us with? So let's put over here some example purposes. I uh, usually like to think about it as an Excel file. So you have over here, let's say your Excel file may not be the nicest drawing over here. 
will be a little bit harder, but let's see what we can do here. Let's say you have over here your Excel file. And in your Excel file, you have, you know, your department uh, ID, for example, and then you have the department name. And then you have, for example, the manager. And let's say that's the information you have. So the department ID we have, let's say, for example, here's IT. Uh, sorry, department ID, let's say is department 101, something like that, let's say, and that's IT. And the manager is uh, John. And then we have, uh, let's say, accounting, right? So let's say it's 102. And uh, the manager, let's say, is Sarah. And then let's say, for example, we have department 103, and over here, let's say, is uh system development right and let's say john is also the manager over there and so on right so that's basically the fields now over here everything is joined i already joined these two tables so over here is just to first make sense of our data so how this data will look in terms of tables on a relational database so it will look like this let me put it another color. So we will have here the department. Now this is not going to be the table, this is going to be the fields. So here we're going to have the department, right? So we have two areas of the department. We have the ID and we have the name. It's gonna be a little bit slow over, uh, small over here. 101, 102, 103, right? And so on. And over here, this is IT, this is accounting, and this is system development and go on. And over here, we also going to have another table, which is the managers, which will have different IDs actually. I, I don't know if it's gonna, okay. So we will have something like that, right? So we will have the manager ID, we will have the manager name, and we will have the department ID, right? So, the manager ID, well, we don't know over here, so let's put one, two, three, four, five, and so on. The manager name, we will have John, and we will have Sarah. Now, you see over here that John is duplicated both here. Now, one of the greatest parts of the relational database is that by creating this area, and how do we define that over here is going to be the departments, why over here is going to be the managers? It's called values are atomic. Atomic means that you are in the smallest single unit uh, of data. So you cannot reduce anything besides department. But if you combine both of them, you can see that you have duplicates. You can still reduce that and divide it into managers and departments. So because we only have two managers right now, John and Sarah, right? We only have them both times over here. But then here is going to be interesting. This is what we're going to have. John it's going to have a department ID over here that is going to be 101. Sarah department ID is going to be 102. And then it's not that it's going to be duplicated, but it's going to be another field. So again, when we mention duplication of data, doesn't mean duplication over here. It means over here that they're duplicating data, right? So we have over here, that's the department. So we will have John over here, 103. So how do we avoid having this John again and all of this information? Right now it's just the name, but what happened if we have also the date of birth, for example, if we have when he was hired <coughs> and so on other information. So rather than doing that, that's what is called values are atomic. So we will divide one into managers And the other one will be into, let's call it department manager table. So over here, it will be the manager name, right? So it will be John, Sarah, and so on. And then he started on one, one, Sarah started on two, three, for example. And we have more information over there and we have their ID, right? John is number one, Sarah is number two. So over here in the department manager, what we're going to have here is where the 
kind of duplication happen. But it is an easier type of duplication. It's not that we have to duplicate all the data over here, right? So what we're going to have over here is the uh, manager ID and the department ID. So we're going to map both of them over here. So we're going to have John over here and John goes to department 101. And then John again goes to department 103 and Sarah will go to department 102. So you see over here we have this duplication, but this duplication is just those two numbers rather than duplicating again his name, duplicating again his date of birth, higher date and everything. That means that values are atomic. Atomic means that we need to make sure that they are in the lowest level. So that's why over here, this one shouldn't happen that way. And I did it in that purpose so I can explain it over here how this duplication happens, right? So rather than having that table over here, let me erase it here, right? So rather than having all of this information right there, not even the department name. So managers will be, for example, let's say over here, date of birth, higher date, etc. So what we will have here, let me see how we can do that. Let me erase this one because I think we already have the concept. That was the kind of Excel file concept. So how we're going to have it here is another table that we call it the department manager, department manager table. And this table will have different rows or tuples. So one is going to be, let's call it the ID because we need a unique identifier. We're going to have the manager ID and we are going to have the department ID. Now the ID by itself is going to be the primary key because remember we always need to have a primary key. And then what is going to happen is that this department ID is going to come over here and this manager ID is going to come over here as a foreign key. So you see now we have all atomic numbers over here, meaning that we're in the lowest level. We don't have now data duplication because we are not duplicating data. Although it may seem like we're duplicating over here, but it's not necessarily, it's just a number. It's easier to have multiple rows of numbers here rather than duplicating every single row of data over here. What happened if, for example, John um, got fired, for example, and then rehired? The higher date may need to change. Well, now you're going to have to change in two locations, right? Well, over here, you will just change in one where you put all the manager information here, and that's it. That's the main purpose, the biggest purpose of why everyone uses the relational database because of that simplicity, because of duplication of data, because of sequencing, and because it's easier for users to get a better understanding on how everything works over here. All of that, at the end of the day, is called normalization. Normalization. So when you hear about normalization of data, that's tied to relational database. So both of them go tie and tie. And normalization is basically making sure that any foreign keys should have either a null value, meaning that it's not linking to anything, or should link to other tables. It, may, it makes sure that each tuple consists of a primary key, as we have it over here, primary keys. Making sure that attributes are present in elementary data items, no internal structure, meaning that they're like this scenario. There's not that as a structure internally. And it's a given instance of data object has only one value for each attribute, making sure that there is, again, no duplication over there. That's what normalization works. So if I were to only have these two databases, I will be violating the normalization, I don't want to call it law, but the normalization type of scenario that relational databases have to abide to. So if a database is not normalized, that means data no, is not going to have integrity. Remember, one of the biggest areas, integrity, one of the biggest areas of relational databases is that it will help you figure out if data have integrity. 
if we are in this location, for example, and we change one of John's information, but not the other one, now that data is not going to be integral. It's not gonna have integrity. Now, if we change it over here one time on the manager, well, there's no other place that we need to change John's data. So we will make sure that that information have integrity. So with that, I hope this helps you. I know that there's like a lot of back and forth. I tried to write it down. I tried to uh, draw it to see if it makes a little bit more sense, but definitely I know that there is a lot of topics about relational database. If you haven't seen a database before or this structure, it's going to be a little bit harder. So that's why I try to put over here the different terminologies, for example, a table or a row or a tuple and so on to make sure that those concepts are clear, concise. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.